Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So what is the safest type of dev job, coding job in 2025? I'm gonna explore that in this video. So uh, hang on to your hats. So in a nutshell, basically SMB, small and medium sized business development, e-commerce, leveraging low code, no code, leveraging AI. This is where you're gonna see the most safety. And in fact, I think you're gonna see a lot of growth in that area of development where development is going to get hit because of AI, what do you think that's going to be? Well, I think the clue is when you hear the CEO of Google, the CEO of Microsoft, the CEO of uh, well, Zuckerberg, of Meta, and what they are doing now is they are saying publicly, for example, recently the head of Microsoft said that 30% of their code is being generated by, by AI. It's not just not just Microsoft, uh, Google, similar type of thing. Meta said a lot of their coding is being done by AI. But this is a very particular type of coding. This is a big business coding. There's still going to be a lot of dev jobs because anybody who knows development knows that coding is just a small part of the process. You still have to figure out what libraries you're going to leverage, how you're going to leverage, how you're going to deploy, deployment plans, scheduling, all this kind of stuff. It's not so simple. So back to where the opportunity is, it's SMB, small, medium-sized business development. Think about it this way. The typical business man or woman, the typical business person, they don't know the difference between Python and WordPress. They don't know the difference between ChatGPT and uh, Claude. They have no idea what, they probably don't even know what Claude is. The point being is that most small business owners don't know anything about technology. So even though... AI and low-code, no-code platforms are making developers far, far more productive. You're getting stuff done in a fraction of the time. Uh, they don't know these business people, I don't know, whatever, I will say somebody who's running a coffee shop. They don't know how, they don't know what their choices are. They don't know if they can use Shopify or WordPress or Wix. They don't know if they're going to do something from scratch. They don't know if they need uh, Node.js or React, probably not. They don't know how to implement e-commerce, whether it be PayPal or whatever. This is uh, all these questions that the answers require a certain amount of knowledge. So just like I saw in the past, I've talked about this in previous videos, where when new technologies come out, developers who embrace this new technology became hyper, hyper productive. So you want to be one of these developers who's using the low code, the AI, the chat GPT, the clothes, uh, all these tools that just make you hyper productive. So let me give you an example. So in my mentoring community, I have uh, one of the members is a math teacher and he wanted to learn how to code uh, because he wanted to develop an app to support his math tutoring, right? So he uh, learned how to code, learned the fundamentals. He followed, he followed well, he followed my program. And then he started building his app. So once every uh, other week, we have live coaching sessions. These are group coaching sessions. So we go over, we look at his app. We look at his implementations. I give him feedback. He responds to that feedback, the following meeting. He makes updates and changes and so on. All good. He already has uh, tutoring students. He already has students for his business. So now he wants to add an extra level of service with his app. Well, the app does quizzing and so forth. And since I'm the studio web nerd, I know a lot about education and software and education. Anyway, that aside, so he develops his, his app and it's still in, uh, I would say, early stages, but it's gone out of beta. I'd say it's maybe a beta three stage now. Uh, it needs a good skinning, but it's functional. And it's functional to the point where now he has one of his, one of his students' mothers is willing to pay to access his software. So he's pretty excited, right? He's like, he wrote to me, he said, oh my God, this is great. Somebody is willing to actually pay to use my software, even in its early stages of development. It's like a beta two, beta three level, but there's already a value to it. So uh, I, think, I think it's 40 pounds a month they're gonna pay to access, he's from the UK. And uh, so that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So here's two interesting points about this. Number one, He's learning how to code. Number two, he's uh, just started with his first app based on his knowledge of industry, in this case, the tutoring industry. 
So he saw a need and he's got his first paying client and it's still in beta three. Uh, number two, he has actually leveraged AI to speed up the production of the, the coding. And he's now leveraging AI in his app. So his, his app is using a GPT to add, to insert extra functionality into his web app that makes it that much more valuable, right? So uh, this is pretty big, this is pretty big. So think about it this way. It gets one client at 40 pounds a month, right? Not bad. And it's basically hands off, right? It's, uh, it's passive income. And he's just a solo developer. And because he has the background that I have to say, I provided him the background. So he has that knowledge. So he's able to leverage the low code, no code and AI tools. He's putting out his product in a fraction of the time that it would have taken otherwise because he's leveraging these tools that I just talked about. So what does that mean? That means, that's number two. So that means that solopreneurs, right? Solopreneurs can now output, get to market more complex apps than they would have been able to prior to the AI revolution and the low-code, no-code revolution. So this reminds me of uh, somebody else I did a consult with about a month ago, I guess it is. And he's out, of, he's out of Asia, and he said that his team and him, they developed a mobile app. They got it done in three months, whereas prior to AI, it would have taken well over a year. So to me, my business brain snapped right away and said, wait, that's interesting. So now, again, small little startups, solopreneurs or small little teams will be able to now compete with the big boys and be able to produce code much more quickly in a fraction of time without all the overhead in infrastructure and bureaucracy that typically uh, you see in larger organizations. So I see this as a golden time, a golden opportunity, by the way, for tech entrepreneurs, because now you can approach problems to solve with software because of AI, local, no local platforms and uh, cloud and so forth. So this is a great opportunity, but you have to change the way you look at software development and think about it. So back to my student in my mentoring program with his math based uh, software that leverages AI to add functionality where he has his first client. Think of it this way, it's just him. Imagine he gets a uh, hundred uh, students, pretty feasible. And he's getting 40 bucks a month per student to use the software that teaches them math. Not bad, 4,000 pounds a month. Imagine if he gets 5,000, 500 students, not 5,000, 500 students. Not necessarily the most difficult thing. He gets 500 students. He's making 20,000 pounds a month. I don't know, that's about, like, that's about 100 million Canadian a month. But uh, anyway, it's whatever. It's about $30,000 a month U.S., I think. Something like that. Anyway, even if it's just 20000 US a month, that's pretty significant money for a solopreneur, right? And this is nearly passive income. Not quite passive, but nearly passive income. So the model works. I did the exact same thing back in the 90s using web technology, which was the cutting edge. It was the doom technology of the time. It was replacing traditional thick line development. And I was able to develop a couple, two or three web apps that uh, had signups and subscriptions and I made money with them and they, beca and they became a passive income generator for me. Yeah, I should have took it pretty much further to be honest with you. But anyway, nonetheless, I uh, had success with them and the formula was leveraging new technologies that made me much more productive where I was able to take, bring product to market in a fraction of the time. AI just takes it to a whole new level. So to recount, the safe jobs and the growing, I think, demand will be in small, medium-sized business development, SMB as they call it. I think that uh, the route people should take, I recommend that you learn the basics of the web stack. You don't have to be a master. Just understand how to build a basic web app. Uh, responsive web app, understand uh, the different tools you have out there, the different processors like PayPal and so on. 
uh, understand when it makes sense to use a WordPress or to use a, a Wix or use a Shopify or to do something from uh, scratch, whether you use a framework. It sounds like a lot, but actually isn't because you don't have to become an expert in all these things. You just have to understand when it makes sense to use these things. And all woven into this, of course, is the AI. Don't look at the AI as um, something to fear. Look at it as a huge opportunity because it is a disruptive technology. We're still very early in the game, but people who leverage this technology are gonna do very, very well. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, uh, small business development, and so much more. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments below. Say, I like this. Or if you think my hair is way too long, let me know in the comments or give me two thumbs down. Um, if you have any questions related to anything I've discussed in this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you like more discussions like this, where I'm weaving my decades of experience of being a professional developer and tech entrepreneur, I've taken product to market a couple of times. My latest one, you can check it out, Studio Web, studioweb.com. It's my interactive training platform for schools. Been in schools for 14 years. So I think um, what differenti differentiates me from others out there on the YouTube lands is that I've actually uh, not only done tons of coding as a freelancer and a contractor, but I've actually taken products to market, which uh, brings a new level of understanding of how all of this works. Anyway. That's it. Enough of the self-promoting. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.